ឲ្យស្រោតដៃអីអោយស្រួលស្រាច់គិតអោយស្រាច់ក្រិចកុំនាយរំពឹងអើយគិតអោយឆ្ងាយយល់សង្វាយយើយសបនានាពីប្រេ
ហើយនៅធនាគារចំនួនពីពាន់ដុល្លារក្នុងមកខែនឹងអស់រយៈពេលបីខែមកហើយហើយគាត់ចង់ឥឡូវនេះគាត់ <cười> លុយគេខាតបល់មុនតុលាថែមទៀតហើយនៅក្នុងគឺថាគាត់បានបងថ្លៃជំពាក់គេខាតហើយថ្លៃអឺលុយតាក់លុយពុនដារបស់ផ្ទះមិនរាល់ហើយគាត់អាចមេរំពីគាត់ទៅពុនដារប្រចាំ
We'd walk away from everything but the tax. So these couples owe so much. Right. The house, mortgage, second mortgage, the, the, the car loan mortgage, and the credit card mortgage, student loan, all the whole things. Okay. Well, the, the student loans, we would not be able to okay. knock off. Okay. okay, not the student loans and not the IRS, right. um, but everything else, the medical debt, everything else so would, would, would go. So what you to say with this? Uh, okay, uh, but, but he wants to keep the house. Okay. So Chapter 7 is, is not an option here because Chapter 7 does many things, but it will not protect your house from the mortgage. Okay, but Chapter 13 can. Um, and so, I, so we would talk about Chapter 13. So Chapter 7 and Chapter 13 both are bankruptcy. Right. These are two different chapters, chapters, two different yeah. sections or areas of the bankruptcy, bankruptcy code. Yeah. Okay. And what I would wind up doing, and maybe and maybe it'd be best if I kind of jump to the end, so um, because I don't know when we're going to run into time problems. Okay. Tell you where this is going to end up, and then I'll start to explain how I got there. All right. What we would do is take that six thousand dollars in mortgage arrears where he's behind, and we'd reorganize that over five years so that, he'd, so that we'd be making a plan payment, and the first $100 a month of that plan payment would be to pay back the $6,000. Okay, so once we file, he's behind, behind he's behind. He's behind. Yep. Okay, so that's one thing we would do, and that's, and that's important because as long as he's paying that, and as long as, of course, he starts paying his mortgage going forward, mm -hmm. he can keep his house. So right off the bat, we have saved his house, even though the bank doesn't want him to have his house. Okay, the bank's not cooperative. So that's, that's the first thing and the most important thing that Chapter 13 has done for people over the years. But the next thing we will do in Chapter 13 is take that second mortgage and just strip it right off of the house. And the reason we're able to do that is because, well, in my hypothetical, the first mortgage is 250000 the house is 200000 That second mortgage is not secured by the house because after the first mortgage, there's no equity in the house for the second mortgage to stick its claws into. So we'd strip that off of the house and we would treat it the same as if it were a credit card. It goes into the unsecured pot, okay? And, and we're going to give the unsecured creditors very little money. In fact, I anticipate giving them one penny on the dollar. So we'll take that 50000 and basically give them $500 spread out over five years. So that's what we'll do with the second mortgage. Because this is a two-family house, because this is an investment property, we actually get to play with the first mortgage a little bit, okay? Because $50,000 of that first mortgage is unsecured. Now, let me say that because of a special provision in the bankruptcy code, I cannot do this for owner-occupied single-family houses. Okay, it has to be some manner of an investment property. But here in Massachusetts, we have a very broad definition of what an investment property is. So as long as you're drawing rental income, uh, we, should be, we should be okay. There is case law that says a two-family is okay. So, so we'd actually take 50 take $50,000 potentially of that 250000 and throw that into the unsecured pot so that the first mortgage would become 200000 Now, this may be something we have to fight about because the bank may figure, okay, we're not worth two fifty, perhaps, but if it's worth two twenty, then that's what we'd become and we save ourselves 20000 So that is an issue that, that does generate a little bit of combat in the bankruptcy court, whereas most of what I'm talking about is fairly straightforward. But if we assume it's 200000 and we can prove it, then that 50000 becomes unsecured and the first mortgage becomes 200000 Now, the monthly mortgage payments stay the same, but the house gets paid off a lot faster. If the house gets sold somewhere down the line, then there's equity in the house because it's been paid down from, from the value, whereas otherwise there may still be you may be doing a short sale if you want to sale it down, sell so, it down so the road. So how about the auto uh, debt that he has, so just, uh, the uh, car loans and... Right. Well, well the car loan, the okay, car loan on the Lexus, we're probably not going to touch okay, because, because, because he wants to, I'm assuming he wants to keep his Lexus. Okay. If he doesn't want to keep the Lexus, then, then, then we can throw that into the unsecured pot. But, 
the bank will come and take his car away. So it wouldn't uh, correlate <laughs> with each other then? You can bankruptcy one side and leave some option to keep some other properties well, and all like that? Well, when you have secure debt,